Hello! Welcome to a Centipede Press Unboxing. This, my friends, is The Man Who Fell to Earth by Walter Tevis. Now, sometimes I like to peek. Ah, yes! We're doing it. Jared likes to use photocopies for his packing lists and shipping materials, which I'm all about recycling. Sometimes you get a little sneak peek into what he's working on. Usually it's just stuff he's reading. And, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Don't get the top of the page for that. If you get the screenshot that and you're like, hey, I know what that story is, let me know. Anyways, big books, big boxes, small books, lots of bubble wrap. That's what you get with your Centipede Press titles. Sometimes he reuses goodies from other titles, such as extra dust jackets. Sometimes you're given extra dust jackets to, you know, to fill up space. It's always very cool and fun to receive extra little goodies. Anyways, this, my friends, is the man who fell to Earth, Walter Tevis. It's already open for me on this side, so it makes the shrink wrap even easier. Let's jump right in. This should be number 68, according to the sticker on the back, which will match a lot of my other Centipede Press titles. Top edge stain, as one might expect. Full wraparound dust jacket featuring the work, artwork of Lucy DeSimony. She previously did the artwork for the Bernard Taylor titles that Centipede Press did. She also has a lot of children's books. Now this isn't a horror novel like the Taylor novels were, but it was kind of fun to be like, hey, here's a, like a children's artist doing Bernard Taylor horror novels. You have an inlaid image there on the front. So usually uh, Centipede Press titles typically have either stamping or an inlaid image like this. I believe the Taylor titles had the stamping. Anyways, Walter Tavis, The Man Who Fell to Earth. Very, very nice cloth binding. Uh, you get a lot of black cloth bindings with a lot of Centipede Press titles. If you have pasty white skin like I do, you're going to leave marks on it. This little microfiber cloth will fix that right up. Illustrated end papers, very, very nice. Very thick end sheets. Another Lisa DeSimony artwork there. She did some full color artwork within, and then Stanislav uh, Dikolenko did some black and white in, uh, artwork. It's introduced by Justin Humphreys, which is a new introduction and a reprint introduction by Norman Spinrad. It also has an interview with Walter Tevis. Yes, it does. There we go. And a cover gallery. Very nice. So this is the original In a Strange Land. Nice little reference to Stranger in a Strange Land. Anyways, uh, The Man Who Fell to Earth, written at the height of the Cold War, deals with Thomas Jerome Newton. Listen to the, listen to the pages crinkling up there from the top edge stain. Uh, it was a... <laughs> uh, it was... Uh, adapted into a film back in 1970? 70s? Uh, featuring uh, David Bowie as Newton. There is his mugshot from Rochester, New York. I'm in Buffalo, New York. This is kind of, you know, just a half hour, 45 minute drive away. But uh, yeah, there's the original gold medal covers. There we go. Very Various paperbacks. A lot of them using the David Bowie artwork. So anyways... It deals with Thomas Jerome Newton, an alien, an alien who comes to Earth in his lifeboat st spaceship, Icarus Descending. There is Dikolenko's black and white artwork there. Uh, he's coming from many, many... Oh, listen to that. <laughs> That's... It's always a fun sound. That is the top edge stain. That is not damage to the book in any way. It's just... The, the paint of the top edge stain has the pages stick together. So it's kind of fun when you're reading a book with the top edge stains. Every new page you open gives you that little whoop. One, 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 three. Okay, it's the Roman three. Gotcha. There's four. Anyways, he's come to the planet to, my understanding is, oh, look at that. That's very nice. My understanding is to help people of his own planet, his planet's experiencing a drought, and he comes to the planet to find a way of bringing his people to Earth. 
Uh, he lands in Kentucky with no money, no, no clothes, presumably. He's kind of naked on the cover there. Um, but he soon brings his intelligence to the people of Earth, and he is making patents and technological advances left and right. There is some Lucy DeSimony artwork there. Uh, very interesting, it's the Lucy DeSimony artwork. It's not, being a nice full color artwork is backed with uh, this beautiful constellation. So that way it's not backing up against the text, having it potentially bleed through more DeSimony artwork. That is very nice. Anyways, uh, I have not read this novel, big surprise there. I will though. <laughs> um, eventually Newton becomes, draws the attention of the CIA Presumably it's the CIA, some government officials who, you know, being at the height of the Cold War, want to do experiments on him and apparently test his eyesight, such as in this thing there. Where is the... Oh, there we go. I was going to say, we haven't seen that too many uh, Dikomenko. Dikolenko? I'm butchering his name. The black and white ones. Oh, we got two back to back. Okay, there we go. I was say, we haven't seen too many of those. Then we have Walter Tevis interviewed by Peter by David Pettis. I don't know where I'm getting Peter from. Excuse me while I just make up names on the on the spot. But heard good things. It's a science fiction classic. Uh, this is the signed edition. Oh, it's backed by the original cover there. This being the signature. There were 500 copies for sale of the signed edition, and I think like a hundred unsigned ones. Uh, Stanislav Dikolenko. It. Online, it said that it was only signed by Lisa and Justin Humphreys. So I believe, even though it only says facsimile for Walter Tevis, I believe the Dikolenko signature and the Norman Spinrad signature there are also facsimiles. I'm trying to, without bringing the camera out of focus, yeah, the Spinrad's definitely a, uh, definitely a facsimile. You can kind of see the pixelation as I bump my camera stand there on those signatures. But you're still getting the signature of Lisa De uh, Disemini and Justin, uh, uh, Justin Humphreys. Uh, so this is still available through Centipede Press. Uh, the signed editions are sold out, but the, there are still unsigned editions available. And it's a very nice quality book. The same can be said about any Centipede Press title. Centipede Press, which is pretty much a one-man operation by Jared, uh, just absolutely knocks out of the park time after time. Very much excited, very excited to see what he's coming out with throughout uh, the rest of the year. I know Club Dumas is a very popular title. That one's getting a little flack for being in like the $300 price range, a little over $300, but I'll have to see the publication. I'm sure it's going to be gorgeous. Dune Messiah is right around the corner. That'll be the end of February. And uh, yeah, can't wait to see what they do next. They always do wonderful wonderful publications. So thank you very much, Jared, for the beautiful book. Uh, seriously, check out Centipede Press. Uh, sign up for the newsletter. The books sell fast. Oh, The Long Walk by Stephen King, Richard Bachman should be shipping soon. I believe they said that was going to be early February. Uh, or maybe I'm mistaken on that, but uh, that should hopefully be around the corner as well. The unsigned, it's not signed by Stephen King. It's signed by the artists. But the unsigned edition, I believe, is still available. Uh, which, I, it's he hasn't really shared that outside of the newsletter, so it's not surprising to me it's still available, but you should check that out. I don't know if I can post a link down below. You might not want it shared, but you should sign up for the newsletter, and then you can buy a copy for yourself, one that does get released uh, publicly. Anyways, check out Centipede Press. Uh, Centipede Press. Their books are absolutely beautiful. Thank you for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing, and we'll see you around next time.